Hey, what's up guys? John here, and today I wanted to talk about uh, decision altitude, all about decision altitude in Navigraph charts. Navigraph charts obviously contain something called a gypsum chart, and today I wanted to talk about everything about decision altitude, everything. You have nothing to lose by listening to this full lecture of me rambling, ranting about uh, <laughs> decision altitude, so uh, please uh, remain, remain seated. Okay, it remains to it. Passenger seatbelt sign is on. So, ding dong. Sorry about that. That was kind of wack. <laughs> that was kind of wacky. Anyhow, let's do this. All about decision altitude. What is MDH versus DH? What is MDH? Minimum decision altitude. Sorry, minimum descent altitude versus just DA. What is that? What was the difference between those two? And we're also going to talk about barrel versus radio. What is barrel? What is radio? Like what is what does it even mean? Why why are the values even different? Like why are the numbers different? Why is there like A, B, and C, D categories when it comes to like the decision altitude? What does that mean? What why why do you classify aircrafts like that? Um, hint is based upon how much the airplane shakes based upon uh reacts to the turbulence basically how much the uh, airplane shakes in response to the turbulence. So um, let's dig into it. Here we go. So, when first, <clears throat> first and foremost, let's talk about our minimum descent altitude versus descent altitude that oh, so many people are just curious about, genuinely. Um, so, MDA and DA. So, on the charts, you're going to be able to find a section that sort of looks like this. So, it's going to look like... D A H C three sixty nine and then you're gonna find this bracket that says three four three five four for example. So this is your barrel value. This is your radio value to simplify it. But how does that relate to MDA and DH? Well these terms actually they are related to these barrel and radio in sense in the sense that um one of them indicates what's called a non-precision approach and the other indicates a precision uh approach so i'm just gonna do a quick diagram and you guys guess which one's precision and which one's non-precision okay so given that this is the runway Say it's one two, running one two, and we're just following this flight path that looks a tad like this, right? Sorry, like that. So we're coming from this waypoint, this star waypoint, and then we're descending, and we are at I don't know, like two hundred feet here. Sorry, uh around around 350 f feet right above the ground or sea level um and one of them is going to look like this and then there's going to be this sensor it's going to be like a sensor that measures the altitude and this is gonna be something and it's gonna be called MDA which is gonna be minimum decision sorry descent altitude and when you do choose to go around you're gonna go around like that right so in case you're going around um, it's either gonna be a condition where you, the runway is like barely visible there's so much fog so at this specific point uh when you reach this point of this altitude uh, of the approach uh you're not able to see the runway then you have to go around unless it's cat 3 right so that's the point for number one scenario number two scenario is going to be a tad different it's going to be so that is going to be DA and in this case you're going to approach the same way 
like that. It's also approximately 300 feet above. And, uh, but in this case, you're gonna go around like that. So it's a little bit different. It's not definitely not the same. Um, so what's the difference between those two? Well, I'm sure you, you have probably guessed. Um, oh, by the way, if you're wondering where the sensor is in this scenario, uh, the sensor is actually capturing from here. So that's the sensor that is basically capturing. Okay, where is the runway, right? So this sensor in this in, in scenario one, this is scenario one, the sensor is measuring that way. But scenario two, these, this uh, measurement sensor is actually measuring like that. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. I, I know it's a little bit confusing, but hear me out. So case one is used in these scenarios, VOR, localizer, RNAV, which is following the nav plan that you entered previously, you know, slash LNAV, right? I can just say RNAV. I'm, I'm sure you guys are gonna understand, and NDB. Scenario two, scenario two is gonna be used for circumstances that are ILS, RNAV, right? So this RNAV is a little bit different from the RNAV above. This is gonna be when it's LNAV. Um, this is gonna be when it's LPV. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but essentially, number one scenario is called a non-precision approach. Approach. But number two scenario is gonna be a precision approach. Typically used in uh, CAT 2 and CAT 3. But number one scenario is usually localizer VOR, so it's gonna be like CAT 1 or less. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but essentially scenario one is often linked with barrel and barrel is less precise uh, and the values between vero and radio are obviously different um, as I just told you this is radio this is barrel radio on the other hand is used in scenario 2 so it's gonna be a precision precision approach so radio is only listed for less than cat 1 ILS which implies LVP. So, yeah, that's, uh, it's just what it is. And uh, for, what was I gonna say? Cat 2 and Cat 3 approaches will use radio because, you know, you're, all, <clears throat> you're already gonna be over the runway environment by the time you reach the minimums. So radio, in cat one is just not recommended because it's gonna be a lot lower than like where you, uh, you w w when it's like safe you know and um, yeah uh, I guess that's really it is there more anything more to add I do not know um, yeah non non precision approach is minimum descent altitude which means you're using barrel. So I'm gonna make a quick summary here. Um, so precision approach. Cat two, three. So this, these are when the weather conditions are bad, right? And pilot needs to have need to be approved prior they need to have something called a, a cat 3 or cat 2 rating before they actually do it cat 3 in this case can be a auto land a full auto land and precision approach is gonna be a, uh it's gonna be a decision altitude so it's gonna be da 
decision altitude. And it's going to be for a radial value. So you're going to use the radial value for your minimum altitude. And for non-precision approach, this is for, you know, all the other cases of localizer, cat1, cat1, you know, uh, obviously these are ILS, this is also ILS, um, RNAV, VOR, etc. You're going to use something called a MDA, which is going to be minimum descent altitude. And you're going to use something called a barrel value. Simple and easy. I hope that summarizes your concerns regarding decision altitude and where to find them. We're actually going to do a little activity where we're going to go to our airport chart. So we're going to select a approach. I'm going to go select ILS 25. Right? If you add ILS 25, then we're going to be able to see all kinds of different approach charts. Here I can select CAT 1. So normally if it does, doesn't indicate anything, it just says uh, ILS, that means CAT 1. So as you guys can probably see here uh, on the top, it's going to say DAH, which indicates it's a decision altitude right and this value is obviously gonna be your barrel value these this value is radio but it's optional you would ideally want to use this barrel value instead which is gonna be 468 which you would input in your FMGC or your MCDU um, next up uh, you can also see the same these same numbers on the bottom of your chart straight in landing obviously runway 25 ILS this is your barrel value 468 but you, what you can also check is a scenario where you're only using a localizer so this is gonna be sort of like a cat 1 landing but this is a localizer only landing right in this case, your decision altitude is going to be much higher because you're not using a localizer. So with DME, it's going to be 680. Without DME, it's going to be 760. Uh, yep, that's it. And remember, when you're approaching, when you're trying to capture the ILS signal, you have to be at 2,500 feet. So this is something you got to be careful of as well. You got to set it to 2,500. Uh, and uh, in case of a Airbus 320 or a Boeing 737, your plane is going to be Cath Charlie rated, Cath Charlie. So this is based upon turbulence. So how violent, <clears throat> how violent your aircraft reacts to like turbulences, and like I think it's based upon weight, right? So it's like sort of like a medium light sort of like thing. Um, and in case of Airbus 320, it's Cat Charlie. So just be careful of that when it comes to the approach. Let's have a look at Cat 2, Cat 3. In this case, it's also 2,500. And uh, for the Cat 2 landing, you guys can clearly see that it's not barrel values anymore, it's radio value. So it's gonna explicitly <laughs> explicitly say that's gonna be a radio value. So it, this means radio, RA. And your radio value is gonna be 108, 108. So you would ideally wanna, once again, input that into your FMGC or your MCDU. Uh, inside, go, go to the perf menu and then go to the approach phase. 
and you're going to be able to find that information there. So you're going to be able to enter 108 right there and uh, and that's it. I think that's pretty much it. Um, as you guys can see, cat 3 referred to minimums. It just means that for cat 2, you're going to be able to find your decision out to here. And obviously for cat 3, so there's two kinds of cat 3. I forgot to mention cat 3. For cat 3 is when like the con weather condition is like really, really bad. Uh, like the video I just recently posted, I filmed in, you know, India. It's, you could just barely see the runway. And the conditions of these cat, either you're going to use cat 3 alpha or cat 3 uh, bravo. It's going to be listed here. So RVR means the distance of visibility. When the RVR is only 200 meters, you're going to use cat 3 alpha procedure. So, but in the case where the visibility is only 75, you're going to use cat 3 bravo. But have a look at the number here. There's none. There's no number. Meaning that you don't, you just do not set the decision altitude. But here, your decision altitude is going to be 50, which is really going to be your radio value. So 50, that's really low. So you would autopilot disengage at 50. Uh, Right, so decision altitude really means your autopilot dis disengaging at that altitude. So, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it all. Thanks for watching my channel. Um, I've also posted instruction on how to input it in the FMGC on the screen. So, so. when you go to the flight plan, you are gonna see this destination menu. Click arrival, and you're gonna see ILS two five approach right there and there's going to be a decision altitude in your curve page so click perf click next phase next phase next phase until you reach the approach and here obviously you're going to enter the information from the arrival panel 240 one three two forty one three it's going to be the wind Q and H and temperature is gonna be niner, niner. Q and H value is gonna be one zero one three. One zero one three. Barrel value is gonna be uh, from your charts. So here you are gonna be able to see. Alice two five. So it's gonna be four six eight for the bear value. It's gonna be four six eight. Hundred above minimum. Either that, or what you can also do when it comes to cat three landing is you could either enter one zero eight radio value hundred above minimum or you could enter fifty hundred above Minimum. Or in cat 3 condition, you're simply going to clear the bear value just like that. And also, in case you guys are wondering, um, as for the decision altitude, it means that you're autopilot disengaging at that altitude and you're uh, basically taking over the autopilot. You're doing manual control starting from the altitude. Just to be clear, because I know it's not been clear for me, for myself, from the in the beginning. So that's it. Thanks for watching.